School fees, a rising crisis. Yes, it's that time again, the beginning of a new school year and the mad dash to raise the money needed to pay school fees. Since the 1980s, there has been a terrible deterioration in the quality of education and general state of Nigeria's government-run schools. This drastic de decline has led to a dramatic rise in private schools. So much so, it feels like there is a new one popping up on every street here in Lagos, which leads me to wonder perhaps that private schools are a lucrative business. In the same way that churches have sprung up on every street also. But that is another topic for another day. So what options do parents really have? One, send their children to a government school. This option is most likely when there is no other choice available due to finances or locale. Two, homeschool the children. Now this is becoming more of an attractive option since COVID. Many parents have woken up to the fact that with support, it is the best option, not only financially, but also in educating their child. This is, however, a hard option for working parents, as it is very hands-on and requires collaboration with tutors, virtual resources, and constant parental oversight. Three, private school, which is often the main option, as it fits in with working parents' schedules. However, it is far and above the most expensive option, for example, when your child starts at a new school, there is often a very large non-refundable deposit to be made for each child. Some schools, as much as one million naira per child. And you've not even paid tuition yet, too. How come schools can get away with this? Yes, deposits are made, but why are they non-refundable? Whilst I'm sure there is a regulating body for this, the fact that schools are able to operate this way means they are not actually being regulated in this instance. Standard procedure would be that with proper notice of your child leaving the school or graduating out, the deposit be returned. But no, not here in Nigeria. Another example, as per private schools, is the rising cost of school fees. Like myself, Many parents had a shocker when receiving the tuition bill with an increase of, say, 15%. Yet many schools feel it is their right to increase fees as they see fit. Now, I am in no way taking away from the fact that these past 18 months with COVID-19 and the mismanagement of Nigeria's finances by the federal government, leading to spiraling devaluation and skyrocketing inflation, have put many schools in crisis but it has also been the same for the most of us in the general population. I cannot accept the reason being given by schools for such a hike in fees being due to inflation. As 2020 to 2021, the rate of inflation has been around three to 4%, significantly lower than the rate of increase of many schools. So where is the value? We parents are told to accept it. That's the way it is. Otherwise, remove your child from the school. We as a society have now come to the point where the occurrence of parents working just to pay school fees is more and more common. Is this really sustainable? And how much longer can this continue? Right, so, so yeah, I think you've, you've touched a very sore point. Mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, <laughs> I won't lie to you. I, I don't, honestly, the last line for me is uh, should we just continue working to pay school fees and rents? Mm -hmm. Because they, this, those mm -hmm. two looks like the only th two things you are working on. I, on one side, I don't blame the school owners. The cost mm -hmm. of doing almost everything is very high. Mm -hmm. So I would take it to the real people who are culpable, the government. Mm -hmm. You allowed government schools to fail completely mm -hmm. because most of you went to set up private schools and you needed a, 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 to make a case. You needed to frustrate parents. Government schools are not approachable again. Mm -hmm. So we are only, we are tied down with private schools. So mm -hmm. for me, I think government needs to look into it to say, let's be realistic, fund schools, fund universities, fund secondary schools that you own. Or parents, 
needs to start working on Jackpot plan. <laughs> I don't know whether I should make that loud, but yeah. it's mm. also an option. Yeah, mm. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. It's a very sore point. You know, I don't want to get started, you know. Get started. <laughs> I have a friend that said that, like you said, that the only two things that is in Lagos for is to pay rent and pay school fees. That's all. You know. But however, you know, there are a few issues that I have a problem with, you know. Uh, you say it's not entirely the private owner's fault. I, I still leave some of the blame to them. You know, I'll tell you why. I have a pretty good idea what it takes to... I mean, we've started a few schools. I have a pretty good idea what it takes to run a school. I don't entirely agree that some of those monies they collect, you know, are directly commensurate to their cost of operations. Mm -hmm. I agree that the cost of operating anything in Nigeria is significantly higher than, you know, most places in the world. However, they're not exactly commensurate. I mean, I have a few friends that work in the bank, and if you hear what they pay in terms of interest on the loans for schools, mm -hmm. it's way higher than other people. Mm -hmm. But that's because the banks also know that they make a killing in terms of profits. Mm -hmm. That's why they can set those interest rates. This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And they will accept those interest rates also, knowing that they are going in Money for... Do you see what I'm saying? So, so there's, a, there's a big problem there that needs to be checked, right? Now, that's a root problem. The root problem is the government, what you mentioned, the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, at public schools, I mean, I went to public secondary school, and it was quite fine. Do you know what I'm saying? The primary was, okay, because, you know, we just wanted to go to a primary, but probably, I went to public, and what happened to all the model schools? What happened to all the federal government colleges? Mm -hmm. What happened to all those, the commands, you know, the Navy schools? What happened to all of those schools? Those were good schools. I went to a command. Mm -hmm. Those were very good schools. Mm -hmm. You learned training, you learned, you know, education, academics, Discipline. everything. So that's the first part of it. So uh, part of the problem is also those entrepreneurs, those that have decided to make education, you know, a, a business, business for profit. You know, too, I mean, too much profit. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay to make profit. Because, I mean, when we were growing up, they said the teacher's reward is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Not any longer. Mm -hmm. Partly, the reward now is in part of the school owner. Because teachers, they don't get paid that well. Yeah. Thank anyway, you. I was about to say, yeah. teachers oh, don't get paid that Trust me, I know that as well. So sometimes, you go to those schools, you know, big schools, they're charging millions of naira. But if you hear what they pay their teachers, mm -hmm. during the lockdown, I mean, the I mean, personal experience, the lesson she got from my daughter, after the lockdown, she didn't go back to her school. Mm -hmm. Because the money she was making from mm -hmm. just having three, four parents that were paying her a salary mm -hmm. just to teach their mm -hmm. children at home, she didn't go back to the school. Which is why I put in that other option, right? Yeah. So for one year <laughs> during this past year, um, this past, for one year of that, I homeschooled my own children. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I and my nanny, I trained her, we homeschooled, we set curriculum, we did everything. So I really got a hands-on experience of what it meant to educate a child. And to be honest, that is looking more and more like the best option for a lot, if parents are able to, to handle it. Mm. But there's so much demands on us in, 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 in daily life. You have to make money. So, so you have to make money. And these days, both parents need to be out in the workforce mm -hmm. or in the workforce. One may not be out, one may be like me at mm -hmm. home in the workforce, mm -hmm. um, but working. And so it's finding um, that balance. The, 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 the thing is that it's getting to the point where it's going to be cheaper for us to send our children abroad to school. Uh, and a, that is what really blows my mind is yes. that, yeah. wait, it's, 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 it's almost there. We're almost yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what does that mean for do, our system? Do you know yeah. this point you just made? A friend of mine calculated what he needed to send her, um, his daughter through secondary school. Yeah. A bird. Um, no, in Nigeria. in Nigeria. What they needed to relocate mm. was about nine million. What he needed to send this girl through secondary school was about twelve million. Mm -hmm. Think about it. it they makes absolutely are sense. waiting for their last paper mm -hmm. to relocate. That's secondary okay. school. Let's not talk about the university. No university. Yeah. Private university. I'm talking about secondary just school. Ridiculous. I mean, Private universities don't need to touch that. So why why mm -hmm. should you stay here mm -hmm. and go through that? Yeah. Don't, not, don't yeah. give up. Uh, no, I'm not giving up. <laughs> and for me, I'm going to like play um, play the advocate. fifth. In this um, matter, because like I'm not no, that's totally involved fine. to yeah, do, we'll, do, we'll do, wait do for again. you to get there. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing I'm learning though from like you guys and then the people before us is that um, I'm cautious about like how many children I want to have because I want them to have the best life, mm -hmm. the best education, mm -hmm. and things like that. And I think that's what Baby Bloomer seem put into consideration mm -hmm. about like family planning and mm -hmm. things like that. Because yeah. now, if you'd ask me if I get married tomorrow, I want to have one child. If if I go above and beyond, they are going to be just two. Even, the, even these days, one self is one plenty. or maximum two, and that's because I do not want to work 
just to keep um, mm -hmm. paying school fees and paying rent. I want to work, give my child the best life and still enjoy mm -hmm. my freedom and my life and my investment. So it's kind of like um, with millennials and with Gen Z, it's like now we've seen how it is mm -hmm. affecting you guys. We won't make the same mistake. Mm -hmm. We are going to plan because we do not want to work for rent and for school fees. We mm -hmm. want to work for um, future rest and relaxation. And I, and I think also this is um, where technology comes in as well. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation comes, comes in is that technology and these teachers who want to teach, who are passionate about the jobs they need, teachers, technology, and children Students, and parents. Yeah. And at some point, we're going to have to cut out the schools. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, boycott yes. The school. Hashtag boycott the school. Boycott the school. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag so boycott the school. I like that. <laughs> so, what a wonderful topic. It was mine, of course. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook. Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. Hashtag The Advocate NG. G. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society.